an honor to be invited to celebrate the NCCS Gala every year and to be a part of Ellen Stobel's extraordinary vision and now Tom Sellers. Tonight, I have the privilege to bestow an award to Sharon Blinn, a woman I admire way beyond words. She is someone who took on ovarian cancer with strength, courage, and grace and came out on the other side empowered and determined to help others. Sharon Flynn created a campaign called Bald is Beautiful while she was in the midst of her cancer journey. Her work would show up on a History Channel documentary as well as a Sex in the City storyline. We would read about Bald is Beautiful in Vogue magazine and see it as part of a Kenneth Cole campaign, all with the same message about surviving cancer with dignity and pride. It was 10 years ago that Sharon was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of 28. She soon realized there was not enough awareness or resources among people in her age group most cases usually fall in the pediatric or geriatric end of the spectrum, which left a void for young adults. She also met so many women of all ages who had a harder time losing their hair than dealing with their cancer diagnosis. Hence, that became her mission. To quote Sharon, with or without hair, one or both breast or reproductive organs, we are spiritually whole and perfect. So I started Bald is Beautiful, but that's a whole other hairy tale. <laughs> Sharon, I need you. <laughs> Sharon? <laughs> Come on out. of walking 11 Revlon Run walks with Sharon and watching her inspire women all along the way. And it is so my pleasure on behalf of myself and Lisa Paulson and the Entertainment Industry Foundation to present her with the Lily Tartikoff EIF Hope Award. cancer patients and their families. It's, it's, um, it's priceless work. Um, as a young woman in my 20s, I thought cancer was the last thing that could ever happen to me. So when I found out I had ovarian cancer, everything I thought I knew about the direction of my life was turned completely upside down. Instead of it tearing me apart, I actually came to more fully realize just how strong I am. From the time of my diagnosis, I decided to see cancer as, cancer as my teacher. A very unpleasant one. <laughs> I would not like her, but I knew I was going to learn a lot from her, and I did. I found ways to apply my, my passion, my creativity, and my sense of humor to make the more traumatic challenges of this journey into a positive and empowering experience. I put together what I call my everything and the kitchen sink approach to healing. I did traditional Western medicine with surgery and chemotherapy. I did Chinese herbs and acupuncture, yoga and meditation, uh, a complete uh, nutritional overhaul. Uh, I did what uh, I call my own version of laugh therapy, which really meant watching any and all funny movies and TV programs I could find. 
and a host of other things uh, across the, the widest spectrum of, of every kind of mm -hmm. healing approach available. Um, and through it all, I came to a really uh, a clearer and deeper understanding of the mind-body-spirit connection, and I activate I activated that in my day-to-day -day lifestyle. Many people have to go through cancer treatment alone, and I am blessed to have what I call my community of angels. Our caregivers are sometimes the unsung heroes of this journey, and they have their own cancer experience alongside those of us who are diagnosed with it. Uh, my parents, Michael and Esther Glenn, who I'm so happy that they were able to be here today from Florida, they were the bedrock of my health advocacy. Family and friends from near and far supported me in ways that are too immeasurable to describe. Tonight, though, I want to take this opportunity to salute one angel in particular, my Manozygotian Ocean, my twin sister, Elisa Lynn. For her, there was no doubt of her purpose during that time. There was nowhere else to be and nothing else that she could possibly be doing that would be more meaningful than being by my side. Until then, I didn't fully understand her part of my cancer journey. Elisa helped me curate my care with so much love and unadulterated imagination. <laughs> she helped organize my post-chemo haircut party and the subsequent head shaving party. <laughs> And these celebrations made what could have been really scary moments into completely joyful afternoons with friends and family. People took turns cutting it, and people took turns shaving it, and it just became really, you know, fun. And I, I look back at pictures of these events, and I would never, looking just at the photos, you would never think I was going through this incredibly traumatic event. It just looks like I'm cutting my hair and having fun. <laughs> She decorated all of my hospital rooms with scarves and drawings, and she taped little cut-out photos of, of my loved ones on the bed rail so that I didn't even have to lift my head to see all the loving faces surrounding me. She created an environment that didn't feel like a hospital so that I felt safe and alive. Elisa slept in the room with me every night after my surgeries so that any time I opened my eyes, I was reassured that I was not alone. Oh, and she also... <laughs> she also makes the best scrambled eggs on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so often caregivers feel helpless and they want to do something. And I want to let those of you know who might be caring for someone right now that you don't have to do or say anything. Just being there means everything. So thank you. Dear sweet Elisa, and thank you to all of the loving friends and family on behalf of everyone who is living with cancer and fighting for our lives. Your presence is the present. In some ways, actually, I, as a cancer survivor, I'm now also a caregiver. Just by walking around with my bald head and a smile, people uh, are often compelled to reach out to me, connect with me, and talk to me wherever I go. In fact, on my flight over here, a, the JetBlue attendant went out of her way to compliment me on my hairdo. <laughs> and within seconds, literally within seconds, she was kneeling in the aisle telling me about her recent cancer diagnosis and her fears of dependent chemo and losing her hair. So we spoke for the last hour of the flight and she hugged me so tightly as I got off the plane that I really understood in my heart how continuing to share my experience through Bald is Beautiful and expressing all of that in my own unique way is of great value and service to others. And I felt it just was an amazing feeling. Higher than the clouds I was just flying in. There's a lot of pain and difficulty in the cancer journey and so much though is also beauty and grace and joy. Ovarian cancer was a truly life-affirming journey for me, and I feel more beautiful, more healthy, more alive, more me than ever. And I'm really, truly honored to be able to share that with all of you here tonight. So, thank you.
Thank you. Please welcome one of our